Hello, it's me, Steven, the calculator guy, and I'm just going to work on a calculator here while talking about my uh, thoughts on crypto. Um, so let's just jump right into it. If you find this video boring, that's perfectly fine. Feel free to not watch it. Um, but basically, I just want to show you guys sort of how I work through some of these calculators. Hopefully you can pick up some skills here uh, when creating your own sort of calculations and estimations. Uh, and, you know, get some thoughts on the markets. So <clears throat> what am I making? I am making, I guess I can name it. I am making a uh, leverage short farming calc, right? Calculator for leverage short farming because it was requested and I built some of it so far. Um, the first thing I built was like where the the money market side, so the borrowing and lending platform stuff. Um, so I'm just going to center that. Yeah, we'll call it money market. Over here, we're going to have the short farm stuff. So that's going to be like the uh, Francium or Francium, for example or you know your alpha homora i have a really good intern actually who who got me a list of all of the leverage uh farms and i'll try to share that list somewhere um down below if you guys want to check it out there is there's some there were some that i hadn't seen before uh, on like polygon which i've always been looking for one of those um that might be mesh swap that which is pretty popular already uh and then there was one that i hadn't heard about on the chronos chain so that's kind of cool um Anyways, what do I have left to do here, right? So <clears throat> let me increase the uh, the visual volume, also known as the size. So basically what I have done is the money market side, more or less. Uh, I'm working on the short farm side. So these are probably going to be hidden metrics over here just because I'm lazy and sometimes I just hide numbers that I use uh, for other calculations. And so it's pretty much set up, right? So this is going to be like you're entering your collateral here that oh you know what i need to add I need to add like the the interest rates uh so that we can make predictions for the future so yeah okay so let's just do that um collateral borrow let's just grab this and put it over here and then do collateral uh interest rate interest rate okay so let's say your interest rate on usdc is something like i don't know five percent is probably reasonable uh interest rate here is probably gonna be something like negative for avax it would probably be like negative six percent okay cool so we have something like that um awesome we'll leave that like that for now maybe i'll merge these cells Okay, so for the short farm, right, you're going to be entering with what you borrowed. So here, if you borrow 333 AVAX, you're going to enter the short farm with 333 AVAX. Like, that's that's what you're going to put into the farm to open your position. Uh, at 3x leverage, with 75% borrowed AVAX, so this is going to be blue, because blue is stuff you edit. This is going to be green, because green is stuff you don't edit. Uh, and so like this will automatically populate this won't this is something you have to type in yourself so like if i change it to 25 percent you see that this changes to 75 percent very simple formula there right i just did one minus this right so one minus 75 percent is 25 percent uh okay so this will tell me how much avax i've borrowed or how much stable that i borrowed and then if i've long or shorted that so like if you borrow 75 percent avax you actually end up shorting uh 333 avax which is good right if you think the price is going to go down you want to be short um if you borrow 25 percent because you entered the position with the uh 33 333 avax you're actually pseudo delta neutral right so when these are numbers are both zero that just means you're pseudo delta neutral um i guess i could like stack these here uh, but let's just leave that like this for now let's also do um apy yeah, it's fine right we don't usually deal with aprs with these uh some have them but i think they're really annoying uh like when they pay you out in their own proprietary token let's target avax like 130 uh, percent i think that's semi-reasonable for like an alpha more position when the markets are volatile okay cool um so i guess just to fill space i could do like real apy uh, which is just going to be like this APY times the LTV, um, which is 50% here. Maybe, I don't know. Uh, but let's just make it easy and not have to deal with that. One thing I will need to grab, though, is my impermanent loss calculator. Because if I don't have that, then uh, it's very difficult for me to remember those formulas. So let's see. 
Impermanent loss calculator. It's cool when you build things and you can use them in the future. Hmm. Okay. Oh man, this is gonna be a pain in the butt. Cause I'm gonna need. No, I don't need that. I don't need you. Go away. Uh, I just need this stuff. So I'm just gonna grab it all. Come here. And then I'll go over to here. I'll just paste it here. I know. I know, guys. Uh, this is how I build stuff, you know? Um, and then I'm slowly going to chip away at this until I don't need it anymore. Uh, so basically, I need the product constant, which is what? It's G32. So it's the quantity times the... In oh, okay. So the product constant is just the initial quantities times each other. So that's easy enough, right? So uh, product constant. Uh, that's going to be just the amounts, right? Yeah, so this would be, uh, gosh, it's going to be this time, oh no, I know what that is. It's these two numbers over here. So, cool. Equals this plus this, right? So, like, in the LP, we have, uh, we have stable coin and we have not stable coin. And right, so this is going to be like the amount of uh, AVAX we have in the leveraged LP. This is going to be the amount of dollars we have in the leveraged LP. So apparently, you add those two things together, and you get the product. Con oh no, you multiply them together, right? Yeah, you multiply them together to get the product constant, which you use for impermanent loss. Don't ask me why. I don't. I, I don't know. Uh, I just I know how to look at formulas and use them. So let's go number. Okay. Initial price ratio, let's get that. Initial price ratio, rado ratio. By the way, if you are looking for like my, you know, uh, ideas on the markets right now, um, I am closely following Solana because I don't know if you saw my post or saw, uh, I think it roots his name, his post, but if Solana gets down to like 22 bucks right now, it's going to liquidate enough Solana to crash the price down to single digits. Um, and I want to know when that happens because I want to short that and make a ton of money if possible. Um, of course, I want everyone else to make money, so that's why I posted about it because I don't want to make money alone. It's not fun to do that. Um, so that's where I'm at. Uh, so I'm following this one, right? Clearly, I'm following Bitcoin over here. I closed my short positions at 1800, so I felt kind of good about that. Still waiting for near to go a bit higher. Still waiting for AVAX. Oh, my AVAX filled. Cool. Uh, so I'm happy about that. Um, still, oh man, this is at 75 cents. I think I closed mine at 80 cents, but that's getting high. That means that the market's going back down. Um, near my near short, I'm still at a loss on, but my other ones I'm doing okay on. Uh, Awesome. I so near is now all profit for me. My near short. All my other shorts made enough money to where this is just house money. Cool. All right. Back to back to here. Initial price ratio is G30, which is initial price divided by initial price. Okay. Cool. This this one's easy. Uh, so let's just do equals because I have the initial price up here. Right. That one. Uh, divided by, and I don't think it really matters. Um, we're using stable coins, presumably, so I'm just gonna say divided by one. Right? I know, I know, you could be doing this with a, something off peg, but I don't. Doesn't matter. Uh, initial price ratio, cool, and then future price ratio would be the same thing, presumably, uh, with the future price. So we need a future price. Let's just do. Uh, future price, uh, uh, future, uh, it's going to be AVAX price. So if you want to know how to insert words into these things that are auto-generated, you put quotes around the stuff that's fixed, you use the ampersand, uh, and then like you, you type in whatever you want. I'm just going to click on the box that says AVAX, and then ampersand again, uh, quote, space, price, right, and then boom, future AVAX price. Yay. Uh, and let's call, let's say the future AVAX price, because, you know, we're, we're bullish, sorry, we're bearish. Let's just say it's $10. So future price ratio. Russian. And I know I could technically just get the future price um, and save the math, right? Because it's divided by one. But just as a habit and to get used to these formulas, I'm going to do it the right way mathematically. 
it's going to be this divided by, well, $1. Okay, cool. So we have the future price ratio and the initial price ratio. Now, how do we get impermanent loss again? Uh, impermanent loss is... Um, doesn't help. Where do I use the impermanent loss? Future quantity? So it's the square root of the product constant divided by the future price ratio. Square root divided by, and when I use this, which one did I do? I did, uh, I did one dollar first. Whew, so I kind of did this backwards. Um, I think it was the ADA then. So with, so it's still the square root, uh huh, of the product constant divided by future price ratio. Square root of really? Is it not the same? H37, H39, H37 times H39. H39. Oh, okay. All right. All right. All right. Got it. So uh, this will be divided. This will be times. Okay. So my AVAX quantity should be uh, times. Yeah. Okay. So let's just do um, future AVAX quantity. And that will be equals square root of uh, fudge. What was it? Oh god damn it! I think it's the, the product constant. Um, I forget future price ratio. Something something like that. Uh, that looks about right. It is so. Let's do future stable quantity, and that's going to be equals square root um, of the future price ratio. I, this is definitely not right because that's just gonna be way too high. Uh, yeah, because oh no, that, that might be right. Okay, right, cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, cool. So, so this is good. I have this. I technically I don't think I even need this anymore. Uh, so I'm gonna just get rid of that. I'm gonna delete these cells. Shift up. Sure. Cool. Um, I'm gonna be able to hide these because I don't need them. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Oh, what the? What happened to my? Oh, there they are. <laughs> I'm dumb sometimes, you guys. Okay. So cool. cool, 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 cool. At the future price. So presumably this goes to twenty. I should end up with l less than that four ninety nine number, and I do. Okay. This works, guys. This works. Isn't that awesome? I love when things work. All right. So, also, let me put this up here. Put this over here. Also, this should be formulaic. Um, yeah, guys. I don't know. Like, look at these markets. It's, uh, it's intense. And one of the reasons why it's intense is because... I want to be able to say, hey guys, we're doing really well shorting stuff, uh, come learn about shorting stuff. But when everyone is doing bad, like 99% of retail is not shorting because they just don't know how, or they're scared to, or they just can't commit to bearish market conditions, even at a 75 or 80% drawdown of the market, uh, you can't brag about doing well, right? And I don't want to brag about doing well because I don't want to brag at all. What I want to do is be like, hey guys, there's another way, right? You can short assets, you can short farm, which is just like long farming in bearish market conditions. And everyone wanted to long farm when we were bullish. Why wouldn't you short farm when we're bearish? There are some additional risks, right? There are liquidation risks uh, if you don't monitor your position very well or if there's a flash crash. Or sorry, well, a flash crash when you're bearish is the opposite. Um, so, like, when I say flash crash in, in bearish conditions, what is it, control I? No, is it alt I? Yeah. Is, uh, you know, if this goes down. So, I love looking at charts inverted because this is effectively the price action you get when you're bearish. Right, you're looking at like, oh, this is really great price action, right? I love being bearish because look how well my investment's going up. Uh, let me flip that back over. <sighs> yeah, I, I don't know if I don't know if we're gonna get that crazy liquidation. So like, there's a major. So it's interesting, right? Because there's a major support line, uh, this pivot point right here, the same place is where liquidation would occur. So I don't know if that's intentional. I really don't know what's going on there. Um, it's just interesting. We'll see how it plays out. Uh, my assumption is most likely all of that collateral and borrow on Solon will get moved and, you know, no harm, no foul. Everyone will be okay. But 
if the liquidation event does occur, I will be attempting to make money off of it and attempting to get every single person I can to make money off of it as well. Because uh, I want all of you guys to win with me. All right, so here we go. Um, so future stable quantity, that should be in dollar, dollar bills, y'all. Uh, so, right, so this is the future AVEX quantity. Let's make that 10, 10 again. Uh, so we have this much borrowed, right? So we have to pay that back. Um, so we do uh, AVAX, uh, fuck. AVAX plus, this is not going to be right quite yet. I'm going to call this surplus. Uh, it's it's going to be surplus or deficit, but I'm just going to be surplus right now because I know it's going to be a surplus if the price goes down. And this is going to be the AVAX quantity minus however much you borrowed minus <clears throat> however much you entered with. So in this case, it's 112, and let's get rid of a few decimal points. Unless we're dealing with Bitcoin, in which case those decimal points are probably important. So you have 112 surplus. So immediately, uh, you can see what your profit is. And we, I guess we haven't even considered APY yet. Uh, so we'll call this surplus profit. Okay, and that's just going to be equals uh, this times whatever the future value of AVAX is. So cool, right? So in this scenario, I love this, right? In this scenario, if AVAX just tanked down to uh, $10, so if it decreased by, I guess that's 33-ish percent, you would be up $1,120 out of a $10,000 initial investment. So it's a little bit more than 10%. It's like 11.22%. Uh, that's cool. That's awesome. Um, I love this, right? I love short farming. So cool. Leverage short farming. Um, of course, there are risks, guys. I'm trying to convince Aperture to take these risks away uh, <clears throat> and like automate this to some extent, but we'll see what happens. Okay. So now we have to effectively look at the um, the yield and consider that as well. Okay, so for that, we're going to look at days out. Uh, and let's just say we're targeting, um, it doesn't really matter, I don't know, 50 days. So in 50 days, right, the APY, uh, so 50 is 130%. Oh, now the way this works, right, is that the APY you're getting is on your initial. Um, so that's sort of how you have to do it. You have to sort of consider this APY being on the Solana. So times that, uh, how does this work again? Yeah, that times, so the days out divided by 365. So that, that 50 divided by 365 is just like the, the chunk of the year that we're multiplying by the APY. So we, we're not, we don't want a full year, we just want like 50, 360 fifths of a year. Uh, and so that'll be 17% apparently. Um, this should be here, and we're going to have that 17% times uh, this. Okay, so, and then make that a number. Cool. So, evax. I feel like the, the past tense or past participle of yield should be yelled. Like the avax yelled under that time frame, because yielded seems weird. Uh, also yielded, I think, is IE. All right, AVAX yielded. Okay, cool. So that's awesome. So then we could do total profit here. And uh, that would just be this plus this times this. Okay, cool. So we have that. That's nice. Uh, it seems low. Because I mean, it should be increasing more than that, right? Uh, what what formula did I do? I did these two. Oh, duh. Parentheses matters, you guys. Parentheses. Okay. Yeah, that's better. That's right. Okay. Total profit. <clears throat> um. Here we need total farm profit. 
total farm of it. And then we can do uh, um, money market return. And so this is just going to be uh, the interest rate on this and the interest rate on this and see like if we made money, if we lost money over that time frame. So here we're going to do parens this times and then we need the days out divided by 365. Uh, and now I should put that in parentheses just for good clarity, but yeah, I'm tired right now. It's 10 o'clock times the interest rate. Okay, so here we made $68. Uh, and then, so how much did we lose in terms of AVAX because of the interest rate? We're going to do something similar. Plus, this is going to be this times, again, we have the interest rate times uh, days out. This divided by 365. That right, uh, probably. Okay, when I do this, so this is that times that. Uh, ah, okay, yep, 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 yep. But this needs to be uh, mm, times the price of AVAX. So we, yeah, this, this feels right. So we made money here. I don't know how much, uh, we lost money here, but we made, we still made more money because we're getting 5% on, on $10,000 and we're getting negative 6% on $5,000. So cool. So then total profit is this plus this. All right. Booyah, this is cool. This is awesome. Uh, now let's try to break it, right? So whenever you build something, you want to stress test it. So I'm going to do that. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is put this price over the initial price, which means that we should be losing money, presumably. Uh, so I'm going to do 20 bucks, And we're down 138 That's good. The money market return. Uh, right, we we got less because now we have interest rate on a, on a higher value asset. That's good that we know that. Um, yep, 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 yep. The only problem here, mm, no, it's fixed. Uh, so this just means that we, we lost this much AVAX, AVAX or plus negative 66. We have to buy those back, uh, to pay off this. So we're down 138. Honestly, it's not bad, right? AVAX goes up. Um, but this is, this is a risk, right? So what is that? Uh, 33% increase in price. And we're down, um, even at 130%, 50 days out. So, you know, you have to know these risks. Uh, um, I think we were like 100 days out. Yeah, the yield still puts us in the positive. So that's cool. Um, that's cool. All right. Not that we're going to have that kind of APY for 100 days. Maybe we will. I mean, Alpha more that yield has been staying super high. But we also now need to look into our liquidation risks. So price of liquidation. 25 bucks, right? So if $25 is our price at liquidation, then you know what? I don't really want to deal with this right now. I just want to sort of finish this up uh, and and show people how to use it and let them play with it. And then I'll tweak it in the future. Right now, I want to make it look nicer. So let us, um, I don't know. Usually I do one of these colors for this. So money market. Short farm. Um, ba, 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 ba. How many is four over? Actually, I could I could stack these if I wanted to. Uh, days out. Hmm. Okay. So well, first let me fix this. Equals, bam, ampersand. That's right. Money market return. Total farm profit. Total farm. Actually, this should be total farm return. 
because it might be it might be negative. Uh, I don't want to call it profit, and then uh, I'll call it total piano. Okay, okie dokie. So how do I want to structure this? Future, future fixed price, future fixed quantity, APY. Um, mm -mm -mm. Kind of want all of this stuff to be by itself. So to do that. Uh, I think the best way to do that would be boom, 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 right. Okay, so that's all together now. All together now. And we have one, two, three, four, five. That kind of sucks. Um, so we'll do two and two at first. APY, future AVX price, future AVX quantity, future state, so future... Apex price. How many is this? One, two, three, four, four, five, eight, nine. Nine. I can do three rows of three. That doesn't really fit in here. So what I'm probably going to want to do is two rows of four, and then keep the profit at the bottom. So what four go together the best? Right. That's sort of what you have to ask yourself here. Uh, we'll put APY first, and then future Apex price because those are the two things that you're going to enter that are going to uh, do a lot. Put those in blue for right now. And then future AVEX quantity and stable quantity. We'll put those over here. Because these are going to be green. Uh, and then AVEX surplus, surplus profit, AVEX surplus. Oh, AVEX. Uh, I think this should be from the farm. AVAX farm, you know, I think that'll, that's better. And then we'll call this farm piano. Is that farm piano farm AVAX impermanent loss imp loss. Right, so this is going to be kind of confusing to understand, but like you would, if the price of AVAX goes up, you actually lose AVAX in the LP. If it goes down, you gain AVAX in the LP. Uh, so that that can that will affect your losses when you go to return your AVAX. Okay, I like this. I think this is cool. Uh, I'm going to bring this over here. Oh, I'm going to go over here because. This is another blue one. So we'll make that blue. Make these green. Okay. AVAX yielded. We don't want that yet. So AVAX farm yield. This be green. Cool. All right. Uh, and then we have three. So cool. And then I like doing this, making it sort of big to recoup for my space. So I'm gonna merge these and merge these, and then make these big and juicy. So. Boom, boom. All right, that's pretty much it, guys. That's like, this is the whole calculator. I'm just going to clean it up a little bit more. Uh, but, so effectively, this will tell you most of what you want to know. The only issue is, like, it's not going to account for liquidation on the platform. Uh, the, uh, the L, like, I haven't accounted for any liquidation on the farm yet so that's kind of a bummer i probably should do that it's just that uh, it, it it varies from from farm to farm so i guess what i could do is i could have you like enter the liquidation prices uh yeah maybe i'll do that too 
Okay, but don't want to bore you guys too much. But I just want to look at Soland really quickly, um, just to sort of see like what's going on there. Also, I haven't checked my Solana position today. So here, the thing that everyone's sort of going all nuts about is, uh, look at this. I wish I was in USDT right now. I mean, even though you can't withdraw it, so maybe I don't. Um, and you can't withdraw because it's all being utilized, so there's none to withdraw. Sort of like what happened with uh, USDN and waves and fires. So here you can see that there is a lot of supplied uh, Solana, and $120 million of that is the whale. And then they've borrowed roughly 85% of all of these stables that have maxed out now, so there's no more stables to borrow. So that's what people are a bit worried, right? So some whale came in, collateralized $120 million of Solana, and effectively maxed out or nearly maxed out their 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 borrow capacity in stables. Now, why would you do that if you thought Solana was going down? Because that's a super risk and you're just going to liquidate yourself for millions of dollars of Solana unless you want that to happen. And you want to, because if you if this whale starts getting liquidated, it's going to crash the price of Solana. Um, so it's interesting. Also, you can use an LP here and borrow against it. That's cool. If you get nice, uh, nice borrow ratio against that, it'd be kind of cool. Um, I don't know if you can though. <sighs> All right. So anyways, my position on Francium, as we can use as sort of like an example, uh, connect my wallet, Phantom. I'm up six and a half Solana, yay! And this is out of like a $500 initial position. So six times 30, 180 out of 500, that's 36% on the borrow, which is, uh, you know, 18% on my collateral, which is pretty good. I don't mind that I, or, or for a couple weeks. Um, I could re rebalance this if I wanted to, but I don't really care to rebalance this. Um, that's one other thing that could take into account but really these are just rough numbers uh to get general ideas and you know apys are looking good right orca get 335 percent which you know all right so i'm happy i'm good um that's it for now i don't know why you would have watched this video it's just me rambling if you did like it please tell me why you liked it uh, i can do more of these in the future if you didn't like it why did you watch it um yeah I'll probably put this tool down once I finish with it. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, have a great rest of your day.